Hi everyone, my name is Leslie O'Toole. I'm a contributor to Backstage and the Los Angeles Times. And I am so honored to introduce these two enormous talents. I've been a massive fan of this show since the very beginning. Um, with no further ado, I'd like to introduce Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney from Catastrophe. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Sit down. That's some, come on. Come on. Wow. Now. So you enjoyed that then? <laughs> are, are there a lot of people here who have seen all four seasons? Yay. I hope so, because they yeah. just showed the final two episodes yeah. of the whole thing. Spoiler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes. Um, so the audience is probably sharing uh, what I feel, which is this sort of uh, collective pull that the show is over. And I'm curious, you know, how does it feel for you? It's been such a long amazing journey oh, God. it feels uh, it feels sad I I feel like I'm I'm not in mourning for it yet because we're doing lots of this yeah. stuff so we're talking about it a lot and kind of pretending it's still yes. a thing <laughs> and then you know once this is over that's it it's dead yeah, dead. We won't, and they'll erase it, and you won't be able to watch it again. So you have to <laughs> tell everybody to watch it now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a major mixed bag, right? Because, uh, you know, we're proud of it. I mean, and it was such wonderful fun to make. So whenever I think about Catastrophe, I feel very happy and, and many fond feelings. Yeah. Um, but uh, then also it's over. So, yeah, somebody asked me today uh, what I'll miss most. Uh, what I'll miss most, and I said writing with I you. I said the same. Yeah. Aww. Aww. <laughs> separate. We separately <laughs> said that. So adorable. <laughs> so adorable. I read a quote from you, Rob, that said one of the reasons it was ending was that you were worried about running out of things to say about. I didn't say that. I didn't. I young. never said yep, that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, it seems highly unlikely that either of you would run out of things to say. So, uh, you no, know, you said that. I did say that. And I s also <laughs> said to someone today that if you've seen Catastrophe, you now know everything I know about marriage and about raising kids and about how to deal with life's vicissitudes. So that's it. Uh, truly, I said, I said to them, Sharon might have more to say. I really don't. And uh, I, I have another show <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of about parenting. So. You know, yeah. I have a few more things to say, but no, I think in in for that that era of that er, you know that area of parenting of kids of that age, those people at that time in their lives, yeah, we said, we the said fuck the loads. Yeah, we like, wrote so our thesis. Yeah, we gave examples. <laughs> <laughs> you got a good grade. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, it is four seasons. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot to yeah. me. That's yeah. That's a significant amount. Yeah, I mean, don't want to be greedy. Don't yeah. want to waste your time with bad episodes. That would be not nice of us. Uh, do, you th do you think it's more quality than quantity? Because I mean, so many of the reviews have said, oh, if only there was more. But, you know, is that key to its success? Uh, well, people say that here more, I think, because they're, you're used to longer seasons. Like in the UK, they're... People are like, yeah, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> like move on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was the actual final scene that you shot? What was the final scene? Yeah, do you not I see mean, it? Yes, I did see it. But <laughs> is that? But uh, things are not always filmed chronologically. Was that? That's oh, the last thing. That, that is, is the last the thing we thing. shot together. It was, la it was our last scene yep. together. Yep. Yeah. So that was it a bit was emotional. And then my last scene was doing some keep fit with um, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Ashley Jensen. <laughs> yeah. So it was much less. I, I had an incredible emotional response to the last scene with Rob. Because, you know, it was the, the, we, we wrote that scene before we even started writing the, the, the final season. And so it, was, it had been in our heads for ages. And it was the last time I was going to film with, with Rob in Catastrophe. So I had a cry. And then Rob's last Just scene you? was Just in a... Well, the, yeah, you, sure. Yeah. I'm sure I did. Yeah. yeah, I cry a lot, so yeah. it's not like and a big then deal. Your, your, la your last scene was in the charity shop, and it yeah. was your last ever scene as Rob. And you, you did cry, with the and I cried, mm -hmm. and it was emotional. <laughs> and then my last scene, everyone just packed up and left because it was like the end of the season. <laughs> everyone was like tired, fried. So I was like ready for it. And everyone was just I yeah. was like, guys. We're, we, I work up to people, like, you know, it just really means a lot to me. And like a key grip is like, fuck off, I got to go to my other job. <laughs> Okay, have your thing. Completely, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. 
Well, let's go back to the beginning. Like so many married couples, you met online. Can you talk about that? How your Twitter conversation began? Were you just, you know, was he just making you laugh for a long time? And you? Oh were yeah, endless? yeah. He was. Uh, he had a cult following amongst, um, you know. It was a cult. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um. at that point, now it's a you know proper mega following, but uh, everyone was kind of talking about him in in the UK, especially yeah. in in the sort of comedy scene. So everyone started following him, and then Rob noticed that. I was yeah, I, him. I I and I had seen Sharon's show Pulling, which you haven't seen. Yep. That it's just a mm-hmm. total masterpiece, and so <laughs> I wrote her, and I was like, yeah, you made you made a mistake and followed me. Why? I, you're uh, the best. And uh, and then we became friendly gradually over that, and it, we'd known each other for a couple of years before uh, we thought about writing a pilot together. Yeah. And, yes. um, oh, and then we did. And so we didn't what, know that. What it was would the moment then? What was the epiphany? For writing together. Yes. Oh, Rob got offered a yeah. I just got offered deal. a script deal, and I was like, well, I want it to be good, so I'll ask Sharon if she'd like to write it with me. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I wanted to do something about our relationship, and so did Sharon. So we actually started a little fun fact. We thought we would start the show with them already married, and then we brought it to the network, and they were like, well, how about you show us them meeting? And we were like, no, oh, f- fine. <laughs> and, uh, and definitely, them meeting was uh, a big part of the show's success. So. Yeah. Uh, and and sort of the whole um, the whole first season actually yeah. um, we had sort of written and in our original first episode as like the first five minutes of the show, yep. and and so and then we realised no it, it would be really funny to see them together what mm. you know getting to know each other as as she becomes more pregnant getting to meet each other's families and all that kind of thing so we were big dummies not to have figured that out ourselves know, but truly <laughs> were. yeah it was a good idea so did you very quickly ease into the writing process together come naturally not, i mean like i think it became fun fairly quickly but i know you know the first few times we sat to write together we would tell each other like deep dark secrets that we thought might make a good storyline and we would always preface it with like okay don't hate me. But one time, a few years ago, I blah, blah, blah. And then you'd be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. and then you'd be like, all right, don't hate me. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't get convicted, but I was, fi- you know, and and then, and so, but then after a few times, we were just being like, oh, hate me not. I don't give a shit. This funny thing happened. And, um, yeah. And yeah, but but also it's 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 an awkward thing to sit oh, side yeah, by yeah. side with someone and, and start yeah. writing, especially when it's comedy, because you know, you want the other person to find you funny and what you're saying funny. And, and so you start off sort of, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, or maybe we could. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's awkward and, and tense and, you know, your fingers freeze up and, <laughs> and you, just feel, you just feel awkward around each other. And the, but that, that went pretty quickly. That, that was, I'd say, the, just yeah. the first couple of days and then yeah. we were grand. Yeah, we didn't read we didn't read it out when we first started because we were too ashamed. Because well, we yeah, shit. that's right. And we <laughs> later, you know, or at least I later was like, oh yeah, you're right. We need to read. We constantly need to read it out. Yeah. Because I know this is sag, but from the writing perspective, like we wanted it to sound like things people really say. So you can't just write stuff and then read it without saying it out loud and think like, oh, that looks clever. Because then you'll read it out loud and it'll sound written. And I don't want to watch that show. No. And uh, so we always made sure to really try to make it sound like human speech yeah so that so was we do all the characters yeah you, sh- you should hear Rob's um, Scottish women <laughs> <laughs> it's like M- Mrs. Doubtfire in, in, in the room uh, profoundly so. bigoted yeah <laughs> so just because so I'm not good at it not that I don't like them I don't but also when you hear me sa- say it you're like ugh yeah. So, so it it was never as simple as you each write your own dialogue. No. You're, oh God, no. you're writing everything. We yeah. are. I mean, we revel in. I love to write a whole speech for Sharon. She yeah. loves to write a whole speech for me. Yeah. People are like, "Are you Rob? Like, I'm as much the character Sharon yeah. as <laughs> Sharon is Rob." Yes. But you know, yeah. and so we love Lines to. Lines are blurred. Do you yeah. each have a favorite line that you wrote for each other? Or something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know because now I don't so remember many. who wrote what. I d- you know? And also, yeah. I've forgotten everything. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. I, I I've not seen the show. I'm not familiar with the program, <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> well, I think your dialogue's so profound that I find myself pausing all the time and to stop and write it down. I just think there are so many beautiful life lessons, particularly 
uh, you're like, actually not in one of these episodes um, about not having to be liked in oh, you know, yeah. season three. Mm. I just I thought that was yeah know, phenomenal. Yeah, and, I mean that was a, I think lesson. that's a big catastrophe sort of life nugget moment is realizing in adulthood because uh, like when you're a teenager in your twenties, you want everyone to like you. Yes everyone even like police officers that are arresting you <laughs> people that you're oh, really harming emotionally you want yep. them to still like you yep. and uh only when you get older do you realize like oh i could live my life in the kindest possible manner genuinely trying to truly help everybody that i meet and still some people are gonna not like you and you just have to be okay with that yeah at what point did you realize you had this sizzling on-screen chemistry <laughs> uh, I mean, I would say like maybe when people we screened the pilot at the Edinburgh Television Festival, oh, yeah, yeah. and I think when we saw a room full of people watch it, then we were like, "Is it good?" Yeah. Now, are they who forced them to laugh? Yeah. There are buzzers under their seat, and when people liked it, we were like, "Maybe it's good." We won't we won't be able to make any more good episodes, but maybe we made one good pilot episode. I, I would say that that was the moment, yeah, because we certainly didn't know. We were just like <laughs> playing those characters, uh, and we knew we were having a good time doing it, and we knew that it was quite a relief actually when we realised that our characters enjoyed each other's sense of humour as, mu as much as me and him do so so it was a very you know it was very easy to sort of laugh and then that kind of became part of the show when someone says something funny in real life you laugh when someone says something funny on tv you kind of go mm, you uh, make a face. so uh, uh, so that that kind of helped the chemistry i think just because we looked like we enjoyed hanging out together which yep. we did do you remember when we um even it ha even happened with season two we handed in all the scripts for season one and they read them and they were like your our protagonists are gonna say these things to each other yeah. and we were like i swear it's It'll gonna be fine. But when we It'll say it fine. it's gonna be like yeah. you know and they're like Ugh. and then even with season two they were like no don't you remember when we yeah. handed in the first ones yeah, and they were like they were so oh yeah. yeah um <laughs> I was, I was, I can't believe the different subjects you covered. I was jotting some down today, and it just never ends. But love, loss, aging, alcoholism, religion, spirituality, parenthood, teenagerhood, grief, addiction, dementia, sexual harassment, the uptick in London knife crime, the uptick in white supremacy in the in the U.S. How how did all of this stuff evolve when you're writing? Is it just like we must talk about this? We must talk about that? I mean, it's, it's no. phenomenal what you cover in such a beautiful way. I don't think it was ever we must talk about anything it's just kind of what came up and what came out on Generally, that day. Yeah, yeah because like we would talk about like the show the wire right mm -hmm. and the w we tried to do a thing that they did well which it, sharon's like fuck what hole are you painting yourself <laughs> into <laughs> when you watch an episode of the wire you are amazed by the amazing story only the next day are you like did i learn something and so we yeah. always wanted to make sure that even if we talked about heady heavy stuff yeah. that you wouldn't be like oh I, maybe i should take notes it's really useful like we yeah. wanted you to just go for the ride the story and then the next day be like maybe i should be nicer to my mailman you know yeah. but only the next day not as you're watching yes yeah. yeah it just yeah I, I guess the thing is is like for when you get older i think i mean i i i stopped wanting to just be the clown you know i stopped wanting to just do things for a laugh so even though we are heavily addicted to making people laugh i i kind of got to a point where i thought now it'd be, be nice if this was sort of saying something mm -hmm. in in some way somehow so I, I think that that was always there that we wanted it to be about something kind of bigger essentially but um we never set out to sort of go these are the subjects yeah. we must cover but also we are i mean at this point if like doing a somebody slipping on a banana peel is smoking a joint but now we're like toothless crack addicts. So <laughs> we try to get the highest high laugh. So like you guys just watched episode six, like when we meet Pat and he's like a nice guy. He's um he's Sydney's boyfriend. He's trying to help out. But Rob is like, you motherfucker. You know, yep. he's angry at this guy, like usurping his role. And so you get, you feel a little bit for Rob, but you're also like, come on, buddy. He's trying to help out. But it's like this miasma. Mm -hmm. of yeah. So that's what we love to do is just get the smelly, icky and try to get laughs, laughs out of that. But also like, like, you know, I mean, at six, there, there's quite a lot of emotional stuff in it. And yeah. when we get to a point where we'd be realizing that it, that it was feeling quite heavy, we'd be like, I know it's grand because there's a guy who's completely yellow in that scene as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're fine. That's covered. <laughs> 
Uh, well, speaking of emotional stuff, obviously you had to decide how to say goodbye to Carrie in this season. You know, how difficult was that process? And presumably, I mean, you know, you had to sort of arrange the whole of the last season around coping with that in a sense yeah I mean that was the, the thing that took the most working out considering there was you know an, an awful lot we had to you know pack in and, and think about but um, deciding how to to deal with that was our biggest kind of conundrum wasn't it um, we sort of toyed with ha having it in an earlier part of the, yeah. the season yeah I'm glad that we did it later because oh, then we kind of, I mean, it's like, you know, the whole world loved Carrie Fisher. So yeah. everybody knew that she had died in real life. And so we just thought maybe we'll pretend that that didn't happen exactly. in our fictional yeah. TV show. Yeah. And then and we'll, we'll deal with it at the end. Uh, and find a kind of surprising way to do it because we knew yeah. no one was going to be surprised. Uh, I mean, she's dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so just the, 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 the way Rob finds out is i guess the the gut punch there you know they're they're going to the states for a holiday and i guess that's the the surprising way it's sort of told but it was weird actually because deciding to put her in that final season ended up giving us so much story for that final episode i mean oh, yeah get, it got rob in the right sort of place emotionally you know it brought his dad back into his life and 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 his sort of past and sort of dealing with that and it also gave my character <laughs> a way to be a brilliant asshole by yep. being angry that her holiday was interrupted yep. and and it sort of ended up giving us all these sort of gifts of, of story and so it was it was it was great that we were able to make the last episode well sort of you know that it, that it sort of um satellited around her but really doing that gave us an awful lot story wise well, what was her bigger influence on the show because it sounds like you were both quite in awe of her and you said even after three seasons you still couldn't believe that you had her and i know <laughs> you've cited her fearlessness yeah and lack of a filter which is you know obviously a huge part of catastrophe i mean can you just talk a bit about you know what will stay with you both from her I mean, we sort of learned that she can do literally anything, you know, like where we try to sometimes uh, walk the razor's edge between very funny and very tragic or scary or whatever, you know, and it might take effort from us. For her, that was just a, an innate skill. So she could be just caustically funny about very difficult stuff. And then, you know, the, I mean, she just twinkles her eye barely and you're like, oh. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, she, I mean, I don't know. I'm just, she was, uh, she was amazing and the perfect, perfect, I don't know, matriarch for our show family. Yeah. It, we, you know, we, um, like you said, we couldn't believe that she did the show. And from the moment she turned up, to do her episode in the first season, we were we were too much. Like we were too excited, and we were all like lined up at the door <laughs> to sort of greet her. And then she just walked in and went straight up the stairs. Do you remember? And they like didn't like sort of give us a second look. So I mean, obviously I followed her up the stairs yeah. and into her room and sat on her bed. But even even that when she was leaving at the end of the day, she only had one day's filming in that first season because it was just yeah. four phone calls, wasn't it? Like split over the series and. We were like trying to get her email address, <laughs> 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 try to arrange for drinks with her. But, you know, she obviously had better things to do. Get some shopping done. Yeah. She was in London. <laughs> and, and then, yeah, just over the course of the season, we, we or the, the series, we'd write more for her and she'd spend more time in London. And, and, yeah, we ended up getting to know her very well. And I don't know. Just it was a pleasure and a privilege, and she was just such a great wit, and still just really enjoyed making people laugh. I mean, she was I mean quip, yep. just constantly <laughs> quipping, and she yeah, yeah, yeah. she you know she enjoyed it. It's kind of just what she did naturally. Yeah, I mean, obviously all of your supporting cast are phenomenal, and it's hard to think of so many shows where you've been so involved with the supporting players, you know, they all had very real important storylines. Was that something else that was important to you both? And were you writing for people you particularly wanted to cast in the show? Uh, we were after, I mean, for the, we wrote the pilot and then we knew that we would have to uh, get Mark Bonner as Chris and, and um, Ashley Jensen as Fran in more, yep. you know, so that was fun to kind of uh, unweave 
that because it had been, you know, it, they it didn't have the best uh, audio <laughs> at the end of the first episode yep. <laughs> of the first season. So finding a way to weave them back in was really fun. Uh, but then, no, we didn't know who the hell we were writing for yep. for the whole first season. But then after that, then we knew. I mean, like Daniel LePayne and, and um, Fergal, Forbes. Jonathan Forbes. I mean, it was just crazy. Sarah Niles. I mean, it was, uh, so, yeah, so fun to imagine what we were doing coming out of their mouths. Yeah, it just becomes so much easier yeah. as well. Because in, in you kind of... I mean, yes, there's jokes in there for those characters, but you also know how someone will just deliver a line that isn't necessary. It's just a, it's just a characterful line, yep. and and you you know that you can sort of rely on them to to bring so much to it. They were just a pleasure, and I think when we were writing the final season, that was our our big worry throughout. Was like, how can we finish all these stories? We've only got six episodes. We had to finish everyone's stories in the fifth episode because we knew yep. we wanted the last one to just sort of be its own standalone alone thing in the in the state so that was just you know that was hard work yeah, yeah. i mean there was a, a lot of emotional stuff you know from those players i felt like you really brought out the best particularly of these difficult male characters you know that the letter from fergal to you i mean it's just lovely <laughs> that yeah a lot of this, i mean dave it's just yeah so so beautifully done so what did you disagree about very little along the way. I mean, we both knew that we wanted the show to be the best that it could. So anytime, you know, Sharon and I had a difference of opinion, I wasn't like, well, she probably has a different uh, opinion because she's an idiot. I didn't think that. I thought like, oh, well, she definitely wants to be the best. So the spirit of what she wants to do is 100% pure. So let's take a look at it, you know? And so we, even if we disagreed on stuff, it, it was like, let's have fun figuring it out. I mean, we did. Was a it was a pretty chill writers room I, I of two people. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely can't remember. Maybe that's just my memory, or like I'm whitewashing. I can't remember anything we disagreed with enough to sort of oh for God. it to be a thing. Oh no no no! I mean maybe individual line. I mean worst case scenario. I mean literally the worst that ever could have gotten where it would be like, hey, I know we'll shoot both. We'll shoot both yeah, those yeah. insults. You have your favorite insult. <laughs> I have mine. Yeah. Let's make Chris say them both, and then <laughs> and then somebody else can decide. Yeah. Does your Irishness and Americanness help the show translate internationally, or is that? too simplistic yeah, i think it's probably bit. a factor you know because like we we definitely will exploit you know like we'll try to say terrible things like i'll try to say terrible things about irish people to sharon yep. and she'll try to say <laughs> terrible things about american people and that's kind of silly because historically american and irish people probably couldn't possibly get along better like culturally you know what i mean so it is fun to to like when i say like when Dave calls when we're at your dad's funeral and he's like, what's the address of Sharon's dad? And I'm like, ah, fuck, I don't know, it's Ireland. Their houses don't have numbers. It's by the like limestone jutting out of the bog, you know? And D like, Dingleberry yeah. Lane. Yeah, Dingleberry it's Lane. It's not untrue. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know? we really lay into the Spanish as well though. Oh, we tear them apart. <laughs> And I would submit, it seems from like what people say on Twitter, that Spain is like the third most popular country for the show. Spanish yeah. people go bananas really? for catastrophe, which is crazy <laughs> because we just make fun of Spain a lot. Because it's like the best country in the world. I mean, I think, yeah, it's fun to, you know, if you, if, if you like everybody, why not just make fun of the best people, we, the Spanish. I, I had a friend who, who moved there and just, just really hated it at a terrible time. <laughs> and all he did was complain about Spain. So we just threw a little bit of him yep. in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just going to ask a few audience questions. Um, how many takes per setup does your director give you to achieve that delicious timing? Or does it just come naturally the first time? <coughs> oh, we get we get a bunch we of get, takes get as we, needed. We we literally have no rehearsal time. I mean, maybe yeah. in the first series, like you know, a day or something. We yeah. have no rehearsal time, so we like to sort of re rehearse on set, and we do that. You know, we 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 get as much goes as we need, mm -hmm. and and but we always because we sort of you know produce the show as well. We always have a mind on you know what the other the scene coming up. Hi, Greg. Uh, <laughs> what the other what the other actor needs? Like, don't use up all their time. You know, like mm -hmm. trust your director enough to know that they feel like it's it's in the bag. But we we, we overshoot the fuck out of it. Like, yep. we we really yeah, yeah. it's unnecessary. 
And then, then at the 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 last shot of the day, we'll do a, a scene in in one in one shot <laughs> wonder kind of thing. Um, if yeah. needs be. But I mean, the director. You know, we've had we've been lucky to have two amazing directors, Ben Taylor and Jim O'Hanlon, who've done every single episode, and. Um, they're massively critical for a variety of reasons, but one big one is that we shoot totally out of order, and I'll be damned if I can remember like what emotional state I was in at the last <laughs> thing. So it's good that they could be like, hey, actually, in the beginning of this scene, you're actually upset because you, you're sharing through a clock at your head in the last one. I'm like, oh, yeah, because I, I forget. Oh, the old, the old <laughs> clock of the head scene. Uh. <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, you mentioned pulling and you've been writing for a long time and, and uh, you know, somebody else wanted to know, at what point did you decide that it was best for you to write for yourself? Oh, uh, when I was getting literally no work uh, as an actress. <laughs> I'd say at that point. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, you know, I mean, I, I was getting a few bits and pieces, but it was, you know, not satisfying and not enough. And... Uh, yeah, so d I, I wrote Pulling with Dennis and we, we both felt that we wanted to make sure that the women in that show were the ones um, saying the funny lines and, and getting the funny setups and, you know, making the funny jokes and, and not just being vessels for feeding lines to their very funny, you know, uh, boyfriend character. So, um, you know, so I was doing bits and pieces, but maybe not just getting the, mm -hmm. the more interesting roles and, yeah. So it must be so phenomenally satisfying to be where you are now then. <laughs> yeah, and, it's all right. And yeah. I mean, you know, would, 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 no, but I mean, would, would your advice to, you know, a lot of actors be to try and create your own product? I mean, it would be my advice, but yeah, it's... Yeah, you know, I, I'm the same thing. I mean, nobody cared about me as an actor until I wrote my own stuff. And uh, not that everybody has to do that, not that everybody wants to, not that everybody can, but, you know, it's a very difficult career, so you might as well, you know, make your own little thing to put yourself in, I, you know? I, I, I will say that it, it's easier comedy-wise because you can uh, literally go out and shoot some sketches or, you know, uh, make a, a sort of... It's, it's just easier to do. I think it's harder for actors who are more skewing towards dramatic roles to just go out and, you know, <laughs> shoot a, you know, a dramatic scene. That That's kind of harder. I, I mean, although you can always do it through through short film and that kind of thing. But I, I, I just think it's, you know, bef before the comedy writing kind of kicked off, I would just put plays on, you know, I'd just like above pubs or where, wherever I could. I think it's about sort of just making sure that you're performing and acting all the time because it's very easy to slip into, you know, doing something else or, or sort of waiting for someone to give you a break. And I just think you have to constantly give yourself a break. You just have to constantly hustle. And I think I've just hustled yeah. throughout my career. I mean, I'm sure there's fear in every career, but, you know, the fear uh, in the creative arts for me would be like just waiting for something to happen. That like if I think about doing that and then I my butthole look clenches and I get scared. <laughs> Whereas if I think about, you know, that that's scarier to me than sitting in front of a computer and writing a scene for myself. Um <laughs> <that> <laughs> I think this this person, Ashley, speaks for everyone when I says, I love the show and think it ended brilliantly, but because I'm sad it's over, if you had done more seasons, where might you have gone with it? You must have talked about it. I, I mean, like, have gone America, America. would have, yeah. yeah, it would have been yeah. fun to check it out, because that would have put a whole new energy into it and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, who wouldn't want to see more Nat Fax and more Michaela yeah. Watkins? Yeah. Oh, it's so good you know, to see him. More He's David so Allen good. Greer. What? Oh, yeah. I know. We were like, what if we asked David Allen Greer? We'll just ask. Yeah. He'll say no, but we'll ask. Yep. No, he said yeah, and he's in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, we always had that in our back pocket a bit, you know, that at some point along the line we'd want to put Sharon out of her element, you know, and, and sort of reverse the, the situations and, and try to not do it in such a form formulaic way. But uh, but yeah, I think so. We, we, got, we got so lucky with that cast and, you know, um, I've completely forgotten your dad's name. That's terrible. Mitchell, Mitchell Mullen. Mullen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, also extraordinary, you know, and uh, so, yeah, I think we, we would have taken it that route or just stayed in the sea and just done some sort of aqua. Yeah, uh, I don't think I don't think we've couple. told I don't think we've told anybody this in any sort of public forum, but I'm just going to go for it. We were going to we were going to offer the role of my dad to Kevin Klein. Yeah, yeah. 
and wow. then Mitchell Mullen came in and read for it, and we were we deleted the already written email to him. We were like, ah, oh, no, we don't know. Mitchell Mullen, <laughs> and he destroyed it. So is that way we were able to afford the lifeboats yeah. on either side yeah. of us when we were yeah. to see. Otherwise, we, you know. <laughs> Sinkers, so you haven't run into Kevin Klein since? Oh well, it didn't get that far. Even yeah. oh yeah, no, we like, send it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like we no, were no, like, no. dear Kevin, would you? And I then know. he walked in, we, and we were like, never mind. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, so do you? I mean, you know, obviously there are many male writers, but do you, as a woman, feel you know part of a vanguard and you know? this incredibly you do say that ballsy a lot. I'm part of a vanguard. <laughs> you know, a ballsy new style of television. You know, you, you know, Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I mean, it, you know, what, why are these shows? You know, so, the list so is endless. There's two. I uh, know, uh, I, I think that's the, that's the, that's no, the problem that, that, actually. But that, there are, no, 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 there there are more. There's but, more. Yeah. There's more. But like, I, I sort of came up with this theory the other day that there are more and people but know their names because there's like, you know, Shonda Rhimes and there's um, Tina Fey and there's Amy Poehler and, and Phoebe and, and people know their names because they're like pandas. There's so few of them mm -hmm. that people have actually, you know, named yep. us. Yeah, Whereas yeah. there's like multiple, multiple hundreds yep. of, of male writers yep. and, and directors yeah, yeah. who are just out there doing their thing, yep. nameless, yeah. getting on with it. And uh, I think, you know, there is this, the, it, it is changing and, and it's wonderful. But I think, you know, uh, time's up is an amazing thing but because it was quite yeah, it's quite a visible thing people think oh well we're sorted now that's grand and mm -hmm. and that's when things sort of slack off and that's when people kind of go back to sort of the easy route like let's go with that male director or let's go with that uh, male writer because they have the credits of course they have the credits because they've been doing it for years because we were yeah. only just getting a look in now and 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 that's that's the problem the problem is that there isn't enough good sort of female you know, um, protagonists out there, lead roles sort of protagonists, mm. because there isn't enough um, females writing them and there isn't enough females directing it, because those stories are always going to be told from that Absolutely. perspective if, if, they're, if um, men are so um, heavily at the, at the helm. Yes. Yeah, I but, mean, yep. <laughs> and in a way, kudos to me for enjoying pulling so much so many years yeah. ago yep. and reaching out to you, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But uh, Catastrophe and Fleabag, you know, have uh, been spoken about and bracketed together consistently. I mean, w what is it about these two shows particularly that have really grabbed, you know, a collective imagination? I mean, is it that, you know, both sides of the pond, we, you know, we are living in these, you know, quite stressful times and we're clinging to these shows? I haven't, s I, I, can I say this? I haven't no, seen Fleabag. I know it's amazing. <laughs> it's, I have a lot of little kids and so I just don't really look at my yep. television that often. Yeah, I yeah, want to yeah. see it, yeah. but unfortunately I can't answer your question. Well, I, I, I've seen Fleabag, of course, and I've seen um, Killing Eve and I, I, I've seen I, Killing Eve. I think it, it's, um, I don't know, I guess it's a, the, there's a strong voice to both of them. I think there, there's a kind of unapologetic um, honesty in both. And uh, you know they're I guess they're kind of heavily authored and um, I don't know they're such completely different shows I, I I guess they just happened at a time when you know I think Amazon was just sort of kicking off wasn't it because um, Transparent had just come out and and so they 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 were quite um, visible in that way because they didn't have many um, UK shows on Amazon at that point and. Um, I don't know. I guess we're we're just we're nice. We're people like looking at us. Probably I don't what know. it is. <laughs> so who makes you both laugh? Um, Alan Partridge. Yeah, yeah, we were just talking yeah. about the new Alan Partridge show. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, yeah, amazing that it's come back after so long. Oh my god! Yeah. Uh, getting on the British one. I only recently started watching, and that blows my mind. Um. Well, Anytime time there's a joke in Game of Thrones, I'm like, oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> and it's funny. Um, I know there's not many jokes in there, but when there is one, I'm like, oh, <laughs> lads, <laughs> you didn't even need to. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, my boys and I, we just watched um, Goosebumps with Jack oh, yeah. Black. Yep. That's very funny. Yep. Oh, yep. I, I, I just finished Russian Doll. Um, that was incredible. Oh, so good. Yep. Uh, I'm halfway through Succession. That's Which I hear is amazing. amazing. Show. Will, will your children ever be allowed to see this show? 
catastrophe. When they're 35. <laughs> my, my daughter is just disgusted with yeah. me. Yeah. She even catches I'm going to try to do enough before they're <laughs> old enough uh, to enough other stuff that they kind of, that it gets lost in the shuffle. Oh, really? I hope. Yeah. Yep. So that they just don't see it. <laughs> my daughter is... Like, <laughs> My daughter's friends. So she's got, she's 15, but she hangs out with boys who are older, of course. Um, uh, like, you know, 16 or whatever. And they, they're like, why did your mum write herself a show where she like has sex five times in the first five minutes? Oh. Like, what is wrong with her? A lot. A lot. I, I can so hear a British teenager uh, saying that. Oh. And you also said, I think it was around the t end of season two or something when things were really taking off, that you were dying to just sit down for a burger with each other to digest it all and take it all in. But it just seemed like it never happened. Did it ever happen? I don't think we ever had the burger. Uh, yeah. We had a burger together oh, once at the end burger. of writing. <laughs> Remember, because we only yeah. ate liquid food yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. writing the first oh God, series. So <laughs> we were writing the first season. Why? We only Because if I eat solid food, I fall asleep. Uh. So we... Also, there was that amazing juice place right yeah, around the corner. It was right around the corner, yeah. yeah. So we would have a $23 <laughs> juice each lunch. <laughs> and Seriously, it was 23 because uh, we would buy two. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we didn't pay for it. And, um, and then... <laughs> So, but then at the end, we we're like, let's have a burger. We had a burger, and we both, we were both like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No wonder. Well, I think I speak for everyone here in saying thank you for all the joy, and we can't wait to see what you both do in the future. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.